Like many user-generated content rhythm games, those two mappers can create a map using whatever song they want under the assumption that they have the rights to use the song. And, surprise, a lot of the times they don't have the rights. But osu has been around for a long time and we're trying to make things a little bit better. You might have seen we have almost 10,000 songs worth of licensed music and songs created specifically for the rhythm game. The most prominent of these has been 2023's Osu World Cup, where we got a whole 20 songs created specifically for the World Cup. And there's one person here in London who made this possible. It is so cold. That person is <laughs> Mango Miser. <laughs> You do a lot of stuff that no one in the Osu community knows about whatsoever. I wouldn't say that. Three deserved winner will be none other than our very own Mango Miser. I wouldn't specifically- Absolutely no one knows who you are. So Mango, I need you to give a little visibility to yourself. I would say there are mostly two groups of people who know me. Most people know me from Reddit for being the guy who achieved 10,400 PP without a 500 PP score. And then there's another group that knows me from my pursuits in tournaments. The way you've been assisting with World Cups is mostly on the music side recently, right? First, can you tell me what exactly is a commission in like the Osu realm? Osu is first and foremost a music and rhythm game. So most of our commissions are music commissions, which involve contacting composers to produce original music. That's, that's it. That's quite literally it. It is pretty simple, yeah. Yeah. Earlier you alluded to how OS has a bit of a piracy issue and as refined and developed OS is, the foundation of OS is hardly original. The four game modes that it centers around are all based on other existing games. And you mentioned we've licensed almost 10,000 tracks, if not more, but some people don't see that as being enough. Uh, by commissioning composers to create original music for us, we cement our status as a legitimate rhythm game compared to most mainstream rhythm games like My My, Jubeat, Sound Voltex. Most of these songs end up being used in the World Cups, and that can be sort of seen as the face of OS. We have quite a large viewership on Twitch, almost 20,000 viewers concurrently on the Grand Finals match. And we really want to show people that in spite of the fact that we're using a lot of unlicensed songs, we have some original content. Looking for something like maybe like 400 grams-ish. Rabbi. Mango is going to be cooking for us in the same way he cooks up Osa Originals. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. So we're going to go back in time. We're going to talk about the entirety of Osu original production and World Cups, starting from what I believed was the first one, but you said apparently it's not the first one. I thought the first one was Ooh Parts in 2020, the tiebreaker. From That's what I thought as well. But then you did some research and you're like, no, it's actually not. Anyway, Ooh Parts then. That was the first Osu original, basically. We're going to pretend the other one doesn't exist. So how did that one come to be? I actually wasn't involved with OS original stuff back then. This is 2020, but I spoke to Walter about it like a few weeks ago. And he told me that Mania 4 Key, the map pooling team, they originally intended to commission a song from Camellia. Camellia said yes. And then Mania got the song and they were like, Mm, this might not be difficult enough, dense enough to chart. Was this a song like without direction? Just like make a song for us, please. Something like that. And then Mania sent the song to OWC team, which was the following World Cup. And OWC said, actually, we can't do anything with this either. So that song never ended up getting used. And that song actually ended up becoming Million PP. And then OWC then said to Camellia, okay, can we have another song? <laughs> and then Camellia being like, a you know, Camille is great. He was very generous and he composed another song and that ended up being Uparts. And to my understanding, Uparts was delivered about a week, maybe two weeks, a week to two weeks before the grand final showcase. And it was sped mapped in like three or four days. There was no video, there was no fanfare. It was just replay. We got a custom song on a stream. Custom song. What does that even mean? So this basically kicked off commissions within the OS community, I think. Yes, somehow this event led to the World Cups having having a continuous, almost a motivation to continue to produce original tracks. Uparts is the first very publicized event that started everything. How does it feel being the only person cooking here while I just like watch you? That's okay. It's not the first time I've done this. You are not the first person to have the mango steak dinner. You will certainly not be the last. Well, speaking of singular things. We got the next commission song, One One, by four people. So for this song, this was when you first actually got involved, right? That's right. How did you help coordinate this? What do you even do? 
So OWC reveal took place end of November, early December, I believe. And like quite literally within a day, I reached out to Kuro Kote and I said, hey, would you be interested in producing a tiebreaker track for us? Like following Camellia's example to ride the hype train, so to speak. That's one reason. But the second reason was also because as of late, there weren't really many Taiko tracks that were suitable for tiebreakers. All of them had been not very good. This is personal view as a map puller. And as a Taiko player. And um, yeah, so I reached out to Kuro Kote and she sort of said, hmm, sounds fun. Let me ask my friends. I can't remember what the right order was actually. But basically A brought on B, who brought on C, who then brought on D. Why was one of them anonymous though? Um, so Johnson Solid is a pseudonym. The reason why artists operate under pseudonyms is because some artists, they don't want their branding to be associated with a particular company, especially while they are working with another company. So to my understanding, Johnson Solid is a well-known music artist who was working with a group that he felt would have been detrimental if it was found out that he was working with Oops. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. The production of the song was quite interesting. This was the first time I had observed a song being produced. So they were passing the potato back and forth. What I mean by that is um, they first started by discussing ideas about the song. It was like a two month process. And then it was either Kuro Kote or Billy Moto who started with the first sample. And then they uploaded it into a Discord group chat. And then they say, hey, well, you can work on this now. So like they passed it back and forth like a hot potato. I yeah. always thought there was like some special process, but no, it's like the same as mapping. <laughs> you give someone your, your partial map, and you're like, hey, fill out this next part. Thanks. Yeah, they shared assets, libraries, and there was one person who was coordinating the whole thing, though. I believe it was Billiam. He sort of had an overarching like sort of structure in mind. And then how was the reception of this song? Like this was the second World Cup original song release. I think it sort of set an expectation. People weren't expecting a original song for Hyper World Cup because mini games. And um, people were very excited to see what you know future things had in store. Of course, nothing was planned. This was purely a one-off thing that sort of happened. But then after this one, people were expecting Catch World Cup to have something, weren't they? And then Mania World Cup right after that. That's right. It almost didn't happen, but it did. We got lucky. We got very lucky. Actually, I feel like you're more qualified to talk more about this because you were the one who was actually organizing the dark. Right. So what happened was Mania saw like OWC and Tiger World Cup both having original song tiebreakers. And they're like, ooh, I want one too. So they reached out to me. I was handling featured artist stuff at the time. And they're like, here's some artists that we want. Can you see if we can arrange a tiebreaker with them? I reached out to one of them. They said yes. So I'm like, okay. I relayed this to the Mania World Cup organizer. And they were like, actually, maybe not. We don't think it'll be difficult enough. Basically, Mania said they don't really want Frums and they wanted someone else. And I'm like, like, okay, uh, this is a matter of like politeness to an artist. If you ask them to do something, it's very rude to be like, don't want you to do this. Never mind. Bye. <laughs> like you can do that, of course, but ideally we don't. And I mean, it was early days in featured artists sort of commissioning outreach. We don't want to muck it up so early into exactly. the process. <laughs> exactly. And very luckily for us, we didn't actually have to do that. We had Catch World Cup coming up, I think like a month after that, and they didn't have a tiebreaker. So we're just like, okay, we will try repurposing this. So I reached out to D Ended up working Dave? out. Is it Dave? His name is Dave. Oh, it's just Dave. Yes, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Frums was actually very accommodating of it because Frums, Frums actually did their homework on it. I'm going to get shot for this, but Cash is not a rhythm game. Frums was able to look at the gameplay and understand what was required and actually produce a song that was very well received with minimal prompting. And then the funny thing is Mania World Cup, they asked for those three artists and the actual Mania World Cup tiebreaker didn't use any of those artists. So Mania 4 Key 2021, super MWC card. Are you the one who makes those names? <laughs> that was Billiam's idea, I think. <laughs> that was, okay. Blame Billiam. This one was a collaboration between Billy Moto, Silent Room, so they're friends. And I think Seura was brought on later on our suggestion. I'm not sure how really we decided these things. We kind of just like, oh, we want this person and that person. And yeah. it's like, it's like berry picking. From the emails I've seen, it's like, you just reach out to an artist like, hey, do you want to collaborate with any of these random five artists? And yes, like, I know, right? Like, uh, it looks so silly looking back on it, but like. I'm surprised they 
accept it so many times. <laughs> the, the other special thing about this tiebreaker though is, unlike other tiebreakers so far, this one actually had like a illustrated background for it, made by Sayura. One of the artists, not Sayura. He said, oh, Sayura is also a really good artist, so Sayura can draw the background. It was really short notice, like 10 days before. So we requested that Mari be drawn, one of the two mascots. We just kind of decided it would be Mari because uh, I think Sayura prefers drawing girls. We'll leave sure. it at that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, Sarah is really good at drawing girls. Um, so we drew. <laughs> you know, you know why, right? I don't. But Sarah's specialty is drawing like. Sarah is really good at drawing girls. Okay. So we decided that it would be best for Sarah to draw a female mini mascot, which is Mari. Very, sh very like short notice, but you know, we were lucky. Like we have been astonishingly lucky up until this point. Yeah, everything seemed to just work out just barely somehow. <laughs> just in time, yeah. Yeah. How did we get you? So the only way we could one-up the Camellia reveal was to debut a featured artist on stream. So I asked you for a list of unreleased featured artists. The one that they thought that was most suitable was you. So um, I reached out to you to contact you to make a song and uh, you agreed. You helped facilitate to create a group chat with you. And um, yeah, we made a song. Yeah, and I think this one was especially special because it sort of like upped the excitement for uh, Grand Finals Showcase reveals because up until now, it's just been like... Play replay. Yeah, play or replay, just like any other showcase map. But this one, there was an actual preview video to build hype. What? How did that come about? The first reason was because um, Corsace earlier that year, they did that Katagiri song. They had an original song reveal for the tournament. It is time for the Grand Finals tiebreaker. Everyone knows who saw that and they're like, wow, that is actually really cool. We need to do something like that now. <laughs> yep. They it's an arms race. <laughs> yeah, it is an arms race. Uh, simultaneously, there was also GTS and they had also videos done for their song reveals. And the only reason I don't think I mentioned I made this video. Every featured artist announcement, I would make the video for it. And this one just happened to align with the World Cup, so I also made a hype video for it. I think integrating gameplay to show a map is really cool. Personally. Yeah, I agree. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> I have a very strong temptation to bite into a raw potato. It's disgusting, yeah. <laughs> And now we are in 2022. So 2022 is when things got a little bit more streamlined with these tiebreaker reveals. Yes, we knew Seven Key was coming back for a while. So this one was planned sometime in September. Coincidentally, Peppy had agreed to give me an email account. At ppy.sh domain account, very fancy. So to make it more official, and I used that to reach out to a bunch of artists following the same procedure we did before. I, I spoke to each lead Maple selector, asked them what artists uh, would you like for the Grand Finals tiebreaker. They returned to me with a list. Then I'd go to you with that list and ask which are feasible. We didn't really have much of an idea of what was feasible or not because I and everyone else, except for I suppose you, had no idea on which artists we actually had direct contact with. Yeah, I mean, it's worth mentioning also, like when things were starting out, you got like Camellia and you got Frums and you got like all these big names that everyone knows. And you think these are like the best you can get. So you imagine, oh, I can just get any artist, right? Yeah, let's get Cabario. I want Cabario for seven key. I reached out to Cabario and they returned to me with a quote of big number US dollars and that was just for his part oh was it supposed to be a collab yeah it was a collab and so it was like bigger number US dollars and we couldn't afford that and I think at some point someone uh asked for necrogoblicon necrogoblicon that was a quote of really big number 
number less because like you assume like producing music is all very straightforward uh, but no like some bands require people to be flown in it's all very complicated and convoluted and anyway, how does that relate here you were telling the procedure of Yes, I return the list to you and you tell me which artists were feasible. And then I just send a bunch of emails phishing, basically. Like in the beginning, it was a little rough, actually. Like I didn't receive a lot of replies initially. I think it was too much information and discouraged them a little bit. Um, but we reached out to a bunch of people and the first one to bite was Hyun. And the Mania people were very insistent on getting vocals for that as well. So we asked Senzai to do vocals. It was kind of shoehorned in. And the end result was that she only sings for about a minute. I think this was the start of when Pepe started to really take notice of the World Cup Grand Final songs. And he wasn't very happy with how Duplicity Shade turned out. This ties into one of the reasons we do commissions in the first place, which is strictly speaking about tiebreakers, although this applies to sort of niche genres, skill sets type things. Over the past few years, the map pool in the World Cups, I saw a spike in difficulty. Tiebreakers, especially being the pinnacle of that difficulty, the grand finals tiebreaker. A good tiebreaker should test a diverse range of skill sets, which often means that the song needs to have specific parameters, multi BPM, a multi rhythmic, that type of thing. In World Cup's case in general, oftentimes the parameters we send are quite descriptive, like 200 BPM, 1-4 for two minutes, 300 BPM, 30 to 45 seconds. We gave them some leeway, but it, it was a very like, we want this, 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 this. And sometimes the artist would give us exactly what we wanted, but that wasn't necessarily a good thing because, well, what we ended up getting wasn't much of a song, more that it was a mishmash of multiple different segments, which Pepe really disliked. I, I actually remember this because um, he wanted to test out laser new timing system and it's like does what? anyone have a song that has multiple oh, bpms no. and then i gave him like one one and like duplicity shade and it's like what is this and i'm like oh no and then that's when he took no i'm pretty sure i was like i mean he's paying for them so it yes of... it makes sense yeah um so he started having more of an eye on that i need to take this out So next came Taiko World Cup. This one was weird because it was another collaboration, but between two artists who like you would never expect to see working together just because they lived in different spheres of music production. So yeah, how did that go? How did that work? I was Taiko very picky about our skill sets. We knew that Onumi had a very specific sound that was very suitable for Taiko, but Onumi's sound alone was not enough. So we felt that it would have been nice if Onumi was paired with someone who was more in line with the things we were looking for. So we gave Onumi a few suggestions, and I think she shot them all down, and she was the one who suggested Akira Complex. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Interesting. Okay. We felt that the end product was not as cohesive as a song as it could have been, and this is mostly due to miscommunication between between myself and the composers. We didn't give enough feedback at each stage. Production carried on, and because of their method of production, I suspect different audio workstations, it was very difficult to make changes post-production. Like, it was very difficult to pedal backwards, so to speak. They were working with MP3s, something about transients. I'm not an audio engineer. While the song that was produced was very exciting and challenging, I don't think either party was entirely happy with the end result. It is unfortunate. And these things happen. It's a learning experience. Um, we learned a lot from that. It highlighted the need for better communication. And uh, yeah, that's two World Cups and two sort of hiccups that we've bumped along already. So yeah, 2022, not a great start. I need to do this for about like five-ish minutes. So while I'm doing this, um, CWC was when things started to turn around, I think. Again, same process. Spoke to the catch organizers. Tell me which artist you want. Now, I should add that rarely do we actually get the first choice. I mean, it's to be expected. Suramaru is who ended up answering our call. We asked Suramaru whether he would be willing to collaborate with a bunch of people. And Suramaru, as I recall, said no. No but I can bring my friend in. <laughs> yeah, the person he suggested, Dee Dee Dice, was not a featured artist. At that point, I'd assume the budget was only reserved for featured artists, but um, apparently not. So we can do non-featured artists now. Catch has a bit of a reputation of dealing with non-featured artists. We'll touch on that next year. <laughs> yeah, they produced an amazing song. There was very little input from our end. We gave them a list of specifications and they delivered and they made a song that was very cohesive. I think that's very clearly shown through what I'm looking at here. There are just seven ranked maps of the same song in every mode. So like, it's just a good song song for everyone. Yeah.
So Catch was pretty good. The trend continued with Mania 4K last year, where two artists together... Um... No, one to begin with. It was Umeboshi Chazuke, who agreed to take on the commission, who then asked whether they could collaborate with Hino Asuka. Also a featured artist at the time. Halfway into production, they then said, oh, can we bring on AAAA? Which was actually yeah. really nice because you'd been trying to... Yeah, I'd sent like at least three emails to them being like, you want to be a featured artist? Here's what we do, blah, blah, blah. And then these two artists were like, yeah, we're going to bring in our friend who happens to be this guy we're looking for. So we said yes on the condition that you reply to our emails, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how we got Quad A as a featured artist on OS. The song, we gave very minimal input. These three artists clearly work together a lot. Yeah. So Mango, I see in my notes here for OWC, it says, holy shit, so many originals. Why Mango? How many originals were in OWC? 11. Why Mango? <laughs> Even though a lot of the community tournaments had followed the example of OWC in 2020 with Uparts, community tournaments, which are less bound by the proverbial red tape, they experienced a much accelerated development. Two examples come to mind. Corsace Open 2022 commissioned something like seven or nine songs. EGTS 2022 commissioned a whopping 22 songs. That's insane. So we felt threatened kind of a way because the World Cup's supposed to be like the leading example. It's the arms race you were talking about. It is an arms race, yes. At the same time, many artists started reaching out to us saying like, oh, we've noticed you've been doing these World Cup original tiebreakers. We'd like to do one as well. It was very difficult for us to say yes, considering if we were sticking only to grand finals tiebreakers, we'd only have at most five slots available. And in OWC 2022, we decided to open the doors a little bit. So we started commissioning other songs, songs that weren't the grand finals tiebreaker, essentially. So now those were much easier to handle and often did not require multiple genres. So in terms of specification, it's very simple. We want a song roughly this BPM, focus on this. In terms of the design, we played around with something called a stinger. We've got something special. Let's see it. So before every original song was showcased, we played a little animation because it was not economically viable to produce an original video for every single song. We decided to prioritize the tiebreakers. We created a video for those. The tiebreaker is one that stood out in its own unfortunate way. Um, we need to go back to 2021. I actually sent an outreach to Leaf as well, but you got back to us first and Leaf responded a while later. Since you had already accepted the job for 21, I decided to defer Leaf's composition for a much later date. So we waited because her schedule was filled up. Production started later than we would have liked. And when we did finally get a sample, what we ended up receiving was not suitable for the Grand Finals tiebreaker. What does that mean? So what does that mean? So as I've alluded to many times already, map pullers are a very stingy, very particular bunch, and they have very stringent requirements. And so what we had provided for Leaf was like a series of like, we want this, 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 this. We weren't sure whether she was unwilling or whether she was unable to deliver what we had requested. It's commission, so what do we do there? Quite late into the commission's procedure, we basically asked Leaf whether it was possible to make these changes. And they were substantial changes. We were talking about changing over 50% of the song for it to be suitable for use in OS World Club. Ultimately, she decided that it would be better to just drop the commission. Yeah, it's really unfortunate things that happen that way. It's sort of the first case of someone not being able to fulfill our requirement. Um, it was reworked for another competition, I believe. So I'm glad that it was able to find a use. But we had an unbroken streak of Grand Finals tiebreakers and we needed another song. We even considered Bill Wirtz at some point. I don't think that would have worked for the Grand Finals tiebreaker. So we reached out to Citrus and coincidentally, Citrus was very quick to respond. And I quote, he said, I'm specialist on like rush order. You may have heard the statistic that Citrus actually delivered the song in nine hours hours. It was not actually true. The song was made over the course of about a week. It was within the first 14 hours or so he was able to produce about five minutes of music, which is about the length of what Extra Judgment ended up being. People probably have the impression that Osu is like this very massive game, so we're able to get all this music stuff done super, super easily, but no. I know Osu has a lot of volunteers. It's what makes Osu special, that so much in the community can happen because people gather together, they have a common goal in mind, they want to see something happen. Just as most recent OWC, if you look at the credits, there's over a hundred people involved just to make that thing happen. Osu is not some massive conglomerate. The best things of Osu have always come from goodwill, I find. I'm a volunteer and um, it's really amazing actually. All of this is able to happen because some volunteers want to see some good things happen. Oh fuck, that's not hot enough. 
I'm gonna edit. You had this whole monologue at the end of 2022. It was very conclusive, but we're not done. So 2023 probably saw the biggest change in terms of World Cup management and organization. First and foremost, we had Flight step down as the lead designer for the World Cups. K2, very prominent designer for community tournaments. We asked him to step up for the design. That one change. Another change, it wasn't just one tiebreaker song for World Cup. It right. was multiple. And there was one more change. Happy had some grievances with how things were being run, especially with all the Discord DMs and group chats. He expressed that there was very little visibility on the processes. So we made use of an existing OS Music Discord server, which was sort of a social space for featured artists at the time. We made use of that. We converted that into sort of a productivity server for World Cup commissions. So with this new system, you got four original songs plus an original tiebreaker? Yes, that's right. This one was different though, because you had like, instead of commissioning one song for two artists, you got five songs? Yeah. So the way this worked out was hilarious because it was a miscommunication. So Toromaru, very diverse, versatile artist. You know what? Toromaru can make a song for any World Cup. We'll ask him, see if he's available. And we sent an email saying, okay, these are the dates. So MWC, the delivery date is then. TWC, the delivery date is like April or whatever. Toromaru say it's all secret number, US dollars. And then it's like, it seems a bit pricey for like a two minute song. Like it depends on the artist. It's like, it's a bit on the high end. About a week later, he sort of said, oh, I misunderstood. I thought you meant you wanted the quote for all five World Cups. And that sort of opened the possibility. It was like, so he was offering like secret number. US dollars for five World Cup. Definitely something we can work with. And it was a complete misunderstanding. We actually upped the price a bit to allow for a bit more flexibility on his end. And uh, we gave more specific requests from our end. And then inspired by Toromar, we asked if Level 4 was interested in doing more. And he said, yeah, so we did five for that as well. And then there was the tiebreaker. Let's start with the production of it because the production was a bit different because of Pepe's new requirements. Yes, at the time, the video assets were sort of a one and done, never to be uploaded again, never to be used again, just sort of a visual flair, which for like the price point, didn't seem like a very good use of the money. So we were asked to reevaluate. In this sort of confusing time, we did not have any visual assets available. We had some generic background that K2 whipped up, which was quite poorly received actually. We were criticized for being lazy and unoriginal, which I think is fair criticism. We sort of set the bar really high. Community tournaments followed and set the bar even higher. And then we kind of just, it was back to, it was actually worse than Uparts, like the very first one. Even that had like an original background. So um, not good in terms of the visual department, but the song stuff, it worked very well. So yeah, along with all the design stuff, there was like a, I guess a different form of development for the song as well. Cause like Pepe had some new requirements that I guess he told you earlier, but you never implemented them until now. He alluded to this sort of early in 2022, but when the Leaf Commission fell through, he sort of took an objective look at it as sort of an outsider, identified that was a failure in sort of community communication, we were being too restrictive, like with the whole two minutes of 240 BPM, one minute of 300 BPM. So Pepe asked us to reevaluate a few things and said that we could send no more than six bullet points. Very specific. Okay. Something like that. And I think Kyoko, which was the resulting song, was one of the most well-received songs. He was allowed to do what he wanted to do. It seemed to work. You've had the privilege of having the BTMC steak before. How does my steak compare to BTMC steak? Well. We just ate food. We ate a lot of food. But we're going to get through these last four World Cups. Let's go through these kind of fast. Taiko World Cup. Featured artist reveal. That was a special one because 7-7 uh, seven, seven has been like someone the Taiko community has been in love with for so long and we just haven't been able to feature them. Should I be here actually? Because I'm just going to be safe and seven, seven made his debut producing a song that was 727 BPM. That was something. And we featured uh, quite a big name for the tiebreaker, Graham or DJ Genki. We should talk about the Stingers, actually. The Stingers, yes. So we commissioned Dreamsiety. We asked her to draw character sprites, and every time an original debuted, we played a short animation. Catch World Cup. Adding on to the earlier point, Catch has a bit of a reputation of dealing with non-featured artists. We'll touch on that next year. <laughs> this year, CWC said, we want these people who were part of Hardcore Utopia. 
And that caused change in how we process featured artists, didn't it? A little bit, yeah. So every featured artist had to hold back all the songs that we'd licensed. But in this case, at the end of like the World Cup, when we just released all the songs onto the featured artist listings, we had no places for these to go. So we just made stub featured artist listings for these. Yeah. A very, very short description to be like, this is the song that they made. If we do license more songs from these artists, we will like give them a proper announcement. It's not supposed to be like a replacement for that. Hatch requested a song from Hav and Kuro. And so for that showcase, was there a little bit of a step up visually or what? There was a step up. Firstly, a storyboard was done by Yumino Himiko or something. Right, a catch player, yeah. And we also commissioned Kiare, I think, who is a French catch player. Yeah, the design was really well thought out. Things were slowly starting to get back on track, I think. This time it only came back because of the people who were just making the map, wasn't it? Yes, but well, each game mode has their own sort of agency and they have their own standards to meet. TWC, for instance, because I was running it, my focus was on obtaining correct licensing for the songs. TWC had a hundred maps, a hundred percent was featured artist. So CWC saw a resurgence in sort of uh, designs, at least on the tiebreaker side of things. If it's a From song, I'm gonna die. <gasps> the lineup was very stacked. From Camellia, returning favorites like Billy Moto and two featured artist debuts. It was then we started also commissioning artworks. We made an open call. A lot of people were interested in helping. Some 30, 40 people registered. Nafi returned to do another amazing storyboard, and I think it was extra hype, partly because of the song, but Nafi took that and did the BPM increasing thing. Does it show it on the storyboard? Yeah, it was like parallel universe shifter. It would go up by one BPM every beat. There's actually a very interesting photo of it. I can show you it. <laughs> that is terrifying, yes. So yeah, at this point, yeah, you've basically perfected commissioning through Osu. I wouldn't say we perfected it, but we had a really good process going. And Hippie was happy with it. That's the most important part. He had no complaints. And so with this momentum, you were able to up things up even more with OWC. So what exactly happened this last month? In OWC, we organized 20 original songs. When we were actually recording this like a month ago, we were very incoherent about Osu World Cup. The camera had been rolling for six or seven hours by then. I wonder what that says about my cooking skill. The thing about Osu World Cup is it was a testament to how like far we've come with all the productions we've done. I just think it's impressive. I don't know. <laughs> it, it is a significant milestone, but I think the same goes for every year. The way I see it, 2023 is just another stepping stone. Every iteration we've made minor improvements to our workflow and the way we handle things. You've been working hard on this stuff for three years now. Are you going to be continuing in 2024 and onwards? I mean, even before I cooked that meal, I had already began doing outreach for OWC 2024. I don't think it's immediately obvious that a lot of these things are backlogged into the future. With the ever expanding scope of the projects that we undertake, we are getting more and more people on board to help additional designers. I guess I can name drop Azer as well. Like Azer's stepped up to assist with communications on music. There was one thing I remember from the night we cooked, something you said, Jackie Lamb said. I, I feel like I didn't quote him that well, to be honest. Like, If you want to try quoting him again, sure. The Jackie Lamb quote, um, about a year and a half ago, I was in the Netherlands to attend COE and Jackie Lamb and I were at a train station. It was something like near midnight and we happened to be talking about the Os originals. And uh, Jackie Lamb sort of candidly said, I had one of the most important jobs on Os right now. And at the time, I didn't really agree, so I was kind Kind of a little skeptical, but he explained that with the OS originals, the original content is really at the forefront of what OS is pushing out. It really affects 
how people perceive the game. Like I said, I didn't really agree with it, but recent developments have really shown that the work we do on Oast Originals, it does have a noticeable impact. In fact, um, just very recently, Chinathan licensed... Should we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about that. N now that it's actually made public, Chinathan actually licensed uh, an Oast Original, Uparts, the very first first Oast Original. And um, we're starting to see the impact of what we do. And uh, there, there, there is some truth to what he said to me all those months ago. And sort of it made me reevaluate, like, yeah, shit, yeah. This is an original thing that Oz is doing. This is what makes us stand out. It's our thing. This wins out. This wins out. All right. Off the record, though.